Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. It's a new day, a new week, and we are very happy to bring you a new show, Speak of Africa. We thank you very much. Without you, we really have no show. We thank all our subscribers. We thank all our viewers. And we thank those who have been sending us content from Africa and other parts of the world. Your help has been immeasurable. In fact, this week, it was announced that we hit 3.5 million views on social media, YouTube. So this is really commendable. We give credit to this achievement to you, our viewers and subscribers. You've done an excellent job to help us reach more people. Unfortunately, we also have some bad news for you. you YouTube is really helping us reach a lot of people, even though they censor us sometimes. But Facebook and Instagram have decided to shut down our accounts. So we cannot communicate with you anymore on Facebook. Instead of doing what most people do when Facebook bans them, they try to create another account. We're not going to do that. We're not, we're not going to get angry. <laughs> we're going to smile. We're not going to get mad. We're going to get even. By getting even, it means that we're going to start business. We're going to take on Facebook. We're going to start doing the same business they're doing. We're going to create a new social media platform. We're calling it Afrizi. Afrizi is the new social platform we're creating. And we're going to launch it on September 1st. So this is going to be good for all the African warriors on the internet and social media. If YouTube has been banning you, making life difficult for you, we're going to create a new home for you. Don't worry about the octopus called Facebook. Facebook is an octopus because we look at it. There's a novel I read back in the days when I just started grad school in America. It was written by Frank Norris, The Octopus. It was talking about ranchers in California versus the railroad. The railroad was just like a dragon, like an animal that wants to grab everything. That's the way Facebook is behaving. The worst part is the internet st started more like a liberation platform a way for you to express yourself and reach a lot of people. But today, octopus companies like Facebook are turning it into dictatorships. They make it easy for dictators in Africa to silence the voices of freedom. OK? This is what Facebook has been doing. We've been expressing ourselves. We've been trying to educate our people. But Facebook doesn't seem to like this. So. They've just decided to close our account because they don't want us to communicate. Just like Donald Trump, when they shut him down, what did he do? He created his own social media platform. And that's what we're going to do right now. Our engineers, our programmers, and our developers are working very hard. I've given them the instructions to begin building a new platform for us called Afrizi. We've already registered the domain on GoDaddy. And our workers who make our dream team are busy making this dream come true. When they shut our account on Facebook, it did not really take us by surprise because we've seen this happen to so many other Africans. They shut them down. They have to struggle to create another account. We are big boys. We're not going to waste time creating another account. We're going to start business. We're going to create the same. We're going to clone Facebook. We're going to create a similar technology, better, newer than Facebook. We're going to make the money from the advertising that Facebook is, is making. We're going to create better content on Africa. So Africans will realize that it's better for them to come to our platform than staying on Facebook. We're going to make it a lot easier to use. Pictures, videos, you're going to be able to share a lot of content. You're not going to have the police running after you the way Facebook runs after people. And one of the problems you have to know with Facebook has been privacy. Facebook sells your information. Some of this stuff has to change. So just know that by the end of this month, starting September 1st, we're going to have a new channel for Africans, Afrizi. You're going to be able to communicate, and you're going to be able to share this channel with your friends. So you're not going to be worrying about the octopus called Facebook. Facebook will be a gone error. So we are now going to compete with Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg is one of the richest people in the world today. We are just like the David, they are the Goliath. But you know the story in the Bible. David is going to take on the Goliath. And 
David is going to win. So we don't mind that he's one of the richest people in America, but we're going to create a platform to compete with this rich person. You have to give us your support because we need you in this fight. We are the underdog. We are the little guy fighting the Goliath. And we know that you're going to help us win this fight. We are ready to go. Are you ready? So come on board because we have to change the dynamic. These social media networks like Facebook are making it difficult for Africans to communicate. They ban us all the time. I know so many social media warriors from Africa who are complaining. Facebook doesn't let them say if you show what they don't like to see. How can we share information with you if we cannot tell the truth? For example, I come from an environment where there is a civil war going on, and it's been going on for almost six years. When I talk about it, Facebook doesn't seem to like it. But if you don't like it, I know it's against their mercenary interests. They want to make money. So most of the dictators in Africa will tell Facebook, please, that Prince of John guy again keeps talking about me, please. I don't want to be hearing him talking about me. Well, I'm just like the sexy fly, OK? I'm the god fly. You know, Socrates used to say he was the god fly. I'm the god fly of the people. I will keep making noise in your ears until you get the message that democracy needs to come to Africa. If you don't want to see this message, you will be frustrated because shutting me down on Facebook is not going to be a solution. Because you're wasting your time, I'm going to get bigger. The message is going to be amplified big time. You'll be hearing it even bigger. And now, I'm going to own the channel, OK? I'm going to own the social media network. It's going to be mine, 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 mine. So big time dictator, you're going to cry because how are you going to shut me down? I own the network. So you are fighting a losing battle. So this is a message, my people. Facebook has, is doing this to me. But I'm not going to cry. I'm not going <laughs> to complain. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to get even, as we say in America. I'm going to get even, challenge Facebook, start doing business, get people to use our networks, make it affordable for advertisers. So we're going to make it easy. If you have a product to sell, we're going to make it easy for you to promote your product on our social network. OK? We're going to make it easy. So that's it with uh, Facebook and their dictator uh, friends. OK? We're going to make it easy. So if you're a social media warrior, come to us. You're going to find a, a, a home, a home where you are welcome with open arms. We're not going to criticize you. We're going to let you express yourself freely. Because that's what can help us make Africa great again. Because the African people need to start a dialogue. They need to start discussing African problems. If we cannot discuss African problems, how is Africa going to get ahead? It's the same thing even uh, Mrs. Arikana Shihimboro Kwai, the former doctor. We have a video also this week that we're trying to remind you what she said about Africans in the diaspora. The U.S., when they borrow money, they're getting it in 1.5, 1.9 interest rate. Africans, when they get the same amount of money, they're paying 9, 10%. The people who don't need a break, they get a break. The ones who need a break, they don't get a break. The sheer survival of the World Bank IMF is based on the fact that African countries and, and many other developing countries do not succeed. Their success is based on our failure. That has to change. And guess who can make that change? We the children of Africa, we, the Africans, are the ones who have to say, we know your game now. Enough is enough. We're not playing it anymore. And this is where the diaspora come in. There are more Ghanaian doctors in New York City than in, in the entire country of Ghana. There are more doc Nigerian doctors in LA than in the entire country of Nigeria. So let's be serious here. What Africa needs is capacity, capacity, capacity. And that capacity is in the diaspora. So it behooves us to bring the diaspora together. Let them understand what is really going on in our Africa. Diaspora are not going home. Diaspora are angry about Africa because they are not understanding the root cause of why Africa is where it is today. Then President Obama was also in the news this week because of the African Film Festival at Martha's Vineyard. There's a movie that the Obamas uh, co-produced or sponsored and this movie is called uh, Descendants. So the movie traces the pe whatever happened to descendants of African slaves who boarded a ship called the Clotilda. And 
It takes us on this journey from Africa to the Americas. What has happened to these descendants of African slaves? So the, the Obamas uh, sponsored this movie. We think it's a good thing. The movie is set in Africa town in Alabama. You know, Alabama is in, in the old uh, slavery. So slavery is really on our minds today. As we talk to you, slavery is on our minds. And we really want to talk about slavery because our people have been slaves. And it looks like the Western world wants us to remain slaves. But when you look at what is happening in the world today, we always look at geopolitics. Is a third world war coming? That's a question on inquiring minds. There is a lot of uh, conflict in the world, the conflict of nations. America has been enjoying the monopoly of power in the world, and China is beginning to flex its muscles. Russia doesn't have much, but Russia too is flexing its muscles. And you can see America trying to counter Chinese and Russian influence. That's what is happening on the world stage today. You take a look, for example, at the visit of uh, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, her visit to Taiwan. You see her landing in ta Taipei. She was accompanied by military jets. Okay, That's how she was able to make it from America to Taiwan to show America's brute force. America had to show China that, listen, we have the power. We'll, we'll challenge you. You are not up to us yet. You, you may be number two, but we are still number one. That is America's message to China. So Nancy Pelosi was able to fly to Taiwan to conduct her business. So this trip was just like a symbol. It symbolizes the strength of America, America's determination to prove to the world that America is still the leader of the free world. China has been flexing its muscles. After the visit, China surrounded the island of Taiwan. But China knows if they strike Taiwan today, Things are going to get messy. Messy. We're get, going to get a, a recession, and they know that, and they're trying to balance their objectives. But you can still see that the conflict in Ukraine continues, and this conflict also is having a bearing on what is happening on the ground in Africa. We start with Ambazonia. Well, in Ambazonia, it's still a killing field. The civil war we've been complaining about continues. This week, you, you can see that La Republique appointed a new... Uh, Commander for the B, Mr. General Buba Dobekrio, to begin his career or tenure as a killer machine in Ambazonia, he started killing a lot of fighters of the ADF. There have been stories that uh, Ayabacho must have set these guys up to be killed or slaughtered by La Republic. We don't really have the facts, so we cannot say much, but this is the suspicion and the accusations that are made on the ground ground zero by most of these, uh, our people. So Ayabacho is taken to task. So he has to come clean and explain his position that he's not part of it. So as you can see, a, a lot of the guys also said the Ambazonia Resolution Forces retaliated by killing more than 25 soldiers from La Republic. Yeah, good afternoon, my dear warriors. And from every analysis where we don't gather from the death of all those fighters in Batibo, it don't boil down, say, Ayabacho, we gather all the unity warriors and where they did for Bui. They can pass for Mankon in their numbers, even with Kapo. They don't know, say, they be beaten under a set up. Ayabacho, gather all of them, go Batibo. Gather them all for the camp for Batibo. F and Komodi, leave them for the way they know, say, they were under with a very high risk. If I don't come out in, then they hint the military way it began for come. Because he really gathered those fighters and Afro can't destroy them for battle. He gathered them as he made a come, me wipe, me they wipe all of them. My brothers and my sisters, they made a day for this house. If I see anything ADF, we will not just pass another road. We will not even salute them, we will not go close. These fighters, the way they try for party, but not plan act. Not plan act. They gather the unity warriors, then can't join the whole few ones, the way they, the few kidnappers, the way they be there for party, but then now they set the military, they make they wipe all of them. That 14 way they die. Unity warriors, the day inside. Plenty. 
Let me just see how. And then the driver for Monday, he died inside that house. Now 15 people then go. 15 people I have show how much he gained for sell 15 souls. 15 souls at a glue. My brothers, my sisters, make one wise. Any person with day inside this house make you wise. Anything ADF, anything Unity Warrior. Hmm. If you did chop with ADF, you join Unity Warrior, already join ADF. Now, any person wanna know say it on the link to anything of that. Me wanna give gap. I may wanna report for this house immediately. Make move it because that one are the number one enemy. Enemy with the inside has a dangerous part the enemy is with the inside. Now, enemy with the inside has now they bring the one the outside, me they come enter. My dear warriors, maybe we're not wise, maybe we're not wise, maybe we're not wise because all we want is for Boya. Thank you, not plenty. Also, you can see Okala Bilai. You've seen this governor of the southwest uh, region. He was in Lebialem trying to install a senior divisional officer. But when you look how strange the setting was, the guy who was holding the microphone of CRU TV is a soldier, not a journalist. So what does that tell you? The place was really empty. There were no civilians. So they were installing a, a new SDO. He was alone, and there were no civilians to take part in the ceremony. The civilians have run away because they are scared, and they, they know that peace is not just going to return by imposing another colonial agent to rule them. So this is really sad, and we know that uh, our people are going to react to this. Uh, but we tell you to take this seriously because the way this conflict can be resolved is to engage in a form of dialogue. But will President Pobia listen? He will not listen. Because he will not listen, you see, see the people of the Republic running away from the country. Some of them were strapped at sea. We can even share a video of a lot of young people from the Republic who were strapped at sea. They knew they were going to die and they're going to perish with the name who is the cause of our trouble, Mr. Paul Bia? On flotte sur les vagues, on ne sait pas où on est, on est perdu. Nous sommes sur place depuis trois heures de temps. Depuis trois heures de temps, voilà les gars qui sont en train de se now more than ever, it is critical that medical facilities utilize modern, reliable electronic health records. Introducing Alexia HTC, the innovative, affordable online solution for physicians and patients. Doctors visits, diagnoses, prescriptions and billing have never been easier. With Alexia HTC, you can work more efficiently with the integrated flexibility medical professionals need today. Schedule a live demonstration. Call or visit us at alexiahtc.com. Next, we we'll move to Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso has a whole lot of news. The first news we want to share with you is a lot of uh, civilians and military guys were killed. And the problem in Burkina Faso is a problem that is common in the Sahel region. It's a problem of jihadists. These people are against Western incursion into their territory, and they want the West to leave. And there's so much anti-French feeling. Let me share a video with you. You may not understand French, but this guy is just complaining about the French in Burkina Faso. Je dis notre mouvement se nomme la France doit partir. Ça dit nous on n'attendait pas qu'ils nous insultent pour qu'on leur demande de partir. C'est vrai que certains Burkinabés, c'est à travers ces insultes qu'ils se sont levés pour demander à la France de partir. Mais nous, c'est notre devoir. Le mouvement, la France doit partir. Ça veut dire la France et ses ambassadeurs doivent partir de notre territoire. Selon nos analyses, c'est la France qui est à l'auteur de tous les problèmes en Afrique. Thank you for watching this video. Next, you're going to see that over 33 people were killed in Burkina Faso by these jihadists. You may think that you've contained them, but you've not contained them. So it looks like Damiba staged a coup, thinking he's going to do better than the civilian administration in addressing the issue with insecurity. But we think he's not doing better. 
So he needs to know, and the injunction needs to know that they are not really doing a good job. Because you cannot really prevent people from dying when they want to die. So the best way is bring good governance. Bring a puppet to rule over people who are tired of puppets is a mistake. The people have chased France out, and now they just want to have the freedom to express themselves and live life beautifully. But will Damiba try to make some peace in this region? It remains to be seen. Similarly, you have the Central African Republic. We have memories of uh, the people using uh, the CFA franc. Are they happy? No, they are not happy. Then what about Ghana? Ghana is also a story where you see Nana Akufo Ado reminding us of slavery. You have the Amina Castle in Ghana, which a lot of you know about, but the president of Ghana is reminding us that the people of Africa needs to be paid reparations. Have we received reparations for slavery? No, and that's the problem the president is telling us we need to pay attention to. Next, we move to Ivory Coast. It's the celebration of their 60th independence day. Mark Lee, two former presidents, Henri Conan Bidier and Laurent Gbagbo were absent amid the celebration. The only noteworthy event was the fact that Alassane Ouattara decided to pardon Laurent Gbagbo and to restore all his wealth so that he can live well again. So we think this was a good move. It would ensure a form of social cohesion so that there will be peace because we know Bagbo still has presidential ambitions. Alassane Ouattara has already run for a third term. So we don't know what he's going to do. Is he going to keep power or is he going to give it to his former rival? Because that's what we're going to see now in Kenya. Kenya is also going to the polls in two days, Tuesday, August 9th. The Kenyans are going to the polls. So you have two contenders. You have uh, the Vice President, William Roto, and you also have uh, Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga used to be the opponent, competitor, and enemy of Uhuru Kenyatta. But it looks like the old dynasties, because in Kenyan politics, you have the Odingas and you have the Kenyattas. These were the guys who really fought for the liberation of Kenya. It looks like Uhuru Kenyatta has decided to bury the hatchet and make peace with his brother, Raila Odinga. But William Rutu already had a lot of presidential ambitions. So for some reason, Uhuru Kenyatta is aligning William Rutu and giving his support but to Raila Odinga. As a result, William Rutu has been fighting like hell to win the presidency. Who is going to win? Well, in a few days, we're going to know. William Rutu seems to be supporting more aggressive measures among the poor, whereas Raila Odinga seems to be the status quo. That's the way the two guys are really uh, presenting their campaigns. One is for the, the establishment. The other guy is fighting to demolish the establishment. So that's just the way things are shaping up. But we like the fact that at least it's a democracy and the two candidates are campaigning vigorously. We just hope there should be no violence because Kenyan elections have always been violent. Next, we we'll move to Mali. And Mali has brought uh, the Wagner Group. We spoke about the Wagner Group uh, last week. They have been killing uh, Malians in the country. Then even the people of Maurit Mauritania are not happy because some of their citizens also have been killed by some of these white soldiers. When you see white soldiers, you know that, oh, the killing was not done by black people. It was done by white people. And so it's very, very sad. We say the truth because the truth shall set us free. Next, we move to Nigeria. Taxes done. You know I'm trying to buy a new house. What's up? Let's get it on. 
If you're searching for a house, call up my man Prince O'Jone, the best in real estate. Take it from your guy's shape. When I say his services are the best in the states, where he's born, he even take care of your tax forms, fat refunds. So come get your business done. Consultations, financial organization, fast processing. No way, and this man is amazing. The Prince. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. In Nigeria, you have a whole lot that is happening. The people are really tired of the insecurity, and they are still thinking that the two candidates, Bola Tinibu and Atiku Abubakar, they feel that these two candidates are just like Muhammadu Buhari. Voting for them will not create any change. It's just like same old, same old. As a result, it is making people to begin paying attention to Peter Obi. We have a video, we don't really have a lot of time to focus on Nigeria, but we have a video that one of you guys has sent to us. You guys were just talking about the nice things that uh, Peter Obi has done when he was governor of I think, Anambra State. Take a minute and watch the video, just the highlights. Mr. Peter Obi administration built from scratch Chukwe Mekod Mego Juku Teaching Hospital with 25 building structures. His government funded transformation of massive infrastructural development, accreditation of 12 health institutions, two hospitals, also built maternal and child care centers across the state. He is the first governor to purchase medical equipment of about 135 million and 50 life ambulances to our hospitals which are still functioning till date. He built and equipped Joseph Milo Heart Center in St. Joseph Adazin Nuku, where heart operations are performed. Anambra State was the first state in Nigeria to distribute more than 30,000 computers, 22,500 HP to secondary schools. Mr. Peter Obi distributed about 700 school buses to secondary schools in Anambra State. We are happy you took some time to watch this video. You can see exactly why people are clamoring for Peter Obi, but is he going to be able to make it? We don't think so because it looks like to be able to make it in Nigerian politics, you need a lot of money. In fact, we have a, a, a lady who shared a comic uh, strip with us a few months ago. She's back again. This time she's comparing the Nigerian citizens. She's telling them, wake up Nigerians, wake up Nigerians. Wake up like the people of Sin uh, Sri Lanka. You can see her talking about Nigerians and Sri Lankans. What is the difference? Well, she thinks Nigerians are not bold like the people of Sri Lanka, but we're telling her that a revolution takes time. Eventually, Nigerians will wake up and they'll be ready to rebel against their leaders who are oppressing them. Next, we'll move to Senegal. Well, we've been talking about Macky Sall in Senegal, the way he's playing games, but it looks like his party has lost the parliamentary majority, and the opposition are really fighting to unseat him. Finally, something nice that he did was he's trying to bring the conflict in Casamance to an end. So it looks like the two parties are trying to sign a deal to make peace. Similarly, we also like another move in Mali, which we did not tell you earlier. Mali has decided to integrate over 26,000 rebels from the north into the national army. We think this form of rapprochement is going to create a whole lot of goodwill. By contrast, La Republic du Cameroon needs to do something with the Anglophones who have been fighting for over six years to create their own state. They need to come to the middle and meet these people and discuss a form of rapprochement. Because look at other Africans are doing it. So why not La Republic of Cameroon? Okay? Then South Africa, we, we see lyrics of lamentation. Lyrics of lamentation, you see the people taking us back to the apartheid days, the struggles, the people who fought for South Africa to be free. Okay? So this takes us down memory lane. Watch the video. You see Nelson Mandela. You see uh, the other guys who fought for South African independence. So they say poetry, the poetry of politics. It takes us back. So watch 
this for a minute. Talking about flashbacks, one of you also reminded us about uh, the 50th anniversary of Uganda expelling Asians. That's under the regime of uh, Idi Amin. It was really sad, and most of these guys uh, were Indians. They were business people. They were already living a very comfortable life, an idyllic life like the Europeans in Uganda. But Amin came and just uprooted them and told them that uh, they have to leave. They didn't ha have to take much wealth, so they had to leave. A lot of them were resettled in the United Kingdom, and today they are telling their stories, and we'll look at the stories that they are telling, and we'll say, okay, this is a part of African history that we should not forget. But remember, are the Ugandans doing better than in the past? They still have another dictator. So it looks like God doesn't really like the people of Uganda. He keeps giving them bad leaders, dictators. Now it's Yoweri Museveni. Before it was Idi Amin. So why don't these people really deserve a better leader? That's a question inquiring minds are asking. And we'll tell you, we've come close to the end of our show. But since we are very poetic, the show of today is poetry. We're taking you to Ambazonia again because there's a video of a young singer complaining about Mr. Paul Bia not being able to do anything. You see the guys playing his music. Then you also have Willy de Paris playing his music. First, watch the music of Willy de Paris. Chers frères et sœurs, quand on arrive à ce niveau-ci, là, ça veut donc dire que notre pays n'est pas perdu, notre pays est garé. Parce que quelque chose qui se paie, on peut encore se battre pour le retrouver. Mais quand quelque chose est garé, ça veut donc dire que c'est perdu d'avance. Franchement, franchement, Pobia, c'est quoi cette connerie là? Franchement, vous les vieillards, si vous les vieux pères, si là, c'est que j'allais discuter ça. S'il vous plaît, écoutez un peu ça. Franchement, écoutez un peu si vous-même, vous écoutez ce que le type est en train de dire. Quand même, on ne peut pas arriver jusqu'à là. On ne peut pas arriver jusqu'à là. Alors, jeunesse camerounais, vous devez vous lever. On doit se lever. C'est terrible ça. Écoutons ça. Je le vois. Également tenu quatre séances, dont trois consacrées aux questions orales adressées aux membres du gouvernement et au débat d'orientation budgétaire. Qu'est-ce qu'il a dit Qu'est-ce qu'il a dit Qu'est-ce qu'il a dit Est-ce que vous avez écouté <laughs> Next, watch the music of this young uh, guitarist. I, I love the way he plays his guitar. So let us lead you out of the show by listening to this guitar. Thank you very much. May God bless you. We pray at Jesus of the matter, Bobo. Jesus Christ was born in Kuperman in Guva Bange. Baptized in Tombe Nyasoso. Papa Mia, you be say you will fix this country. Where that I am, Papa Yamana don't go. Camillo no get wardrobe, but it is charged close on the star. Medical practice software is too old. Indeed, 
All the programs are built on mumps, technology of the 1950s, and the programs cost too much money. Epic and Cerner cost billions of dollars. Meditech costs thousands of dollars too. In fact, that's why we created AlexiaHTC.com, a new and free EMR slash EHR for doctors. AlexiaHTC.com is built for HIPAA. Yes, magical one screen technology, ease of use, quick charting, amazing e prescribing, tight labs integration, multi office difference, because we believe doctors and patients need a break today. Be the first to test drive AlexiaHTC.com. You have nothing to lose, you have everything to gain. Act now. Call 240 350. 1131 Alexia Care Corporation at alexiahtc.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.